My name is Kiana. Welcome to Power Your Story Season 9, a podcast from Master School Matters and Creative Imposter Studios in Chicago. This season, our theme is experiences. Thank you for listening. Enjoy the show. Welcome to Power Your Story Podcast. My name is Elvis, and today we are talking about our experience growing up with disability. I have with Alejandro, Essen, D'Angelo, Gennaro, and Tabante. So our first question is... What disability do you have and what does that mean? What's that with Gennaro? Okay, so my disabilities are autism, ADHD, and Tourette syndrome. So autism is like, it's basically a disorder and ADHD is another disorder, which is active development hyper disorder. And Tourette syndrome is like when you have certain outbursts. Yeah, that's good because um, I never heard uh, there's some other types of disability. I do know, but I don't know like all of it. So how about Essen? I have special needs because I have autism because I still learning. I never talk to everybody, but I do got autism. Yes. So I'll jump into D'Angelo. So autism means like you um throwing outbursts. I might go look it up on my phone. Autism is a developmental disorder of variable characteristic by difficulty in social interaction and communication and by registering or repetitive patterns of thought and behavior. So you have autism. I think I would say um it's really um bad to me being um yelled at or being fussed at. I don't like that. Yeah, I can hear that. I know, like, like as you, you feel frustrated, mad, frustrated. Like you don't know why you get mad for no reason. Because like having disability can be a hard time, stressed out, and feeling frustrated because I keep seeing some like kids, little kids when they were born. And they're trying to not embarrass themselves in front of them, like your classmates, or you're doing like in public where you go out, like you're in the store, or you're in um an event or anything like that. Some people think that uh you're that you're crazy, but you're not crazy. Nobody's crazy. That's how they're born to have a disability. Says so you have an autism that you cannot control it, but it's okay that you cannot control it because it takes more time and more challenges how to do it like step by step but how to control it your anger not to get mad or getting fight to others that trying to make fun of you or saying like that you're crazy or what's wrong with you my mom thinks i have autism that's what her thought but for me i don't look like i have the autism but now um i want to see like a neutrologist um, it's like a type of doctor. It's not a doctor like helps like checking your health, but it's a different type of doctor that um, can help you. Like they're gonna like test you if you're good at like math, reading, or you know how to write, speaking, and it was they would see the result if you have autism. When I got the results, I had no autism. So no, I don't. I don't have autism. But thanks, Angelo. You're welcome. My disability is learning disability. Since I have a hard time learning like a subject, like any class, like math, science, social studies, reading, writing. Like for in my case, I have a hard time reading. Uh, I know how to read, but something like like that I had, I had to read and ask it a question like what is about the story that you read, and I had a hard time to answer it. So probably that didn't didn't like read it well. Or probably didn't pay attention what the story about. So like keep forgetting like every time. So I had a hard time like that subject. And also I had a hard time like social study as well, like learn by history, math as well. Probably I'm not I'm actually sh- not sure, but yeah, I have a, I have learned disability and I have another disability. I just found out um I missed it like one one year or two years ago uh, when I came to Graham. I just found out some forms that I have an intellectual disability. 
And this intuitual sensibility is when you don't know anything like doing by yourself, like like being independent living. Like for example, if you don't know how to take a shower, or you don't know how to brush your teeth, you don't know how to be hygiene, like be clean, like clean out your body, you don't know how to dress well, uh, you don't know how to like be cooking, like any kinds of food that you love to eat, how to pay your like some bills, like managing money bank, like saving some money, like buying food and like paying bills. But I'm still learning how to do it. Um, and I know how to take showers and brush my teeth as well. Devante, are you there? Yes. So the question is saying, what disability do you have and what does that mean to you? Autism spectrum disorder. What does that mean to you? Well, when I was growing up, I refused how to speak. And I never speak for 18 years. Now I learn how to speak after all them years. I never spoke. I stay quiet. Being born with autism, people treat me like I'm like I'm different. Yeah, I still get bullied and beat down a lot because of my disability. I was diagnosed with autism. I was three years old. Yeah, I never spoke at the age of three. So my mom had to give me a speech psychologist to help me speak. Wow, that, that's that's really tough, Devante. Yeah. I, and I hear you that um, that you didn't speak, that you were quiet, that you didn't even know what to do. So say so, so you were saying that they were, they were bullying you, saying names. Also, they were like, you were like beat down because of your disability. And now you can talk for yourself. So Alejandro, are you there? Yes. Okay. So the question is, uh, what disability do you have and what does that mean to you? Talking. Talking? Yeah. Okay. So... What is the hard time that you had in your life because of your disability? Well, honestly, my hard times when I actually uh, had a hard time when I had a disability is when I was uh, three years old because, like, I wasn't able to talk or anything. And I had, like, an ear infection or whatever, like, during the time and other things that I wasn't aware of. And when I got to seven years old, at some point, I had to get a speech therapist or whatever. And I was able to talk at that point. Like it was a hard life for me when I was trying to speak or whatever. Like it it made me try to do like a different language. And I didn't even know what I was saying. Cause I was like, I I didn't know any better. I didn't even know. I was really itching to learn how to speak and stuff. Like I was like having a hard time speaking and I had some hyperness and everything going on when I had no medication. Like, I was something else. But then like when I got the medication that I need, I started improving. I was very happy. My family was there for me and I was able to find the right doctors to help me out. All right. Uh, does anyone else want to answer this question? Yeah, I don't like that. It called a vice and they got their autism. Like it's not that good. That's it's bad. You need to tell your parents call everybody's name like that is i don't like that so i can see a generous chat it says that another thing is i was bullied during elementary school until eighth oh, grade okay. eighth grade all right so how you got changed for yourself because i i heard that you did stand up yourself when you yeah, were eight so how you did it well when my family at one point like basically told me to stick up for myself at that point but then like one day, I remember I was in a computer lab when I was in elementary school. Like, it was no teachers around. And basically, what happened was it was a girl that was bothering me for no apparent reason. Like, I was just minding my own business. And then she had a goal to smack me across my face when she came across the other side. And I just sat there. Like, I, I was just thinking to myself, what am I just going to do? Sit here and be a punching bag or just fight back? And something told me to fight back, and I did. And basically, it took, like, two or three people to get me off the person that was bothering me for no reason. Like, basically, when she did it again, basically, I pushed her to the floor, and we were fighting, and then I had her to the wall. I was getting sick of it at that point. And then at one point, I was really tired of the bullying. Like, I was, like, just shocked I was able to stand up for myself. Mm. Yeah. I know it's kind of tough with bullies. Like bullies doesn't care about your excuses or about 
like leave me alone, leave me alone. But they don't care about like your excuses. They they rather like keep bullying you and playing with you. Like they think that you're foolish, but you're not. For me, what's been hard for me is people making fun of me is real painful. It's real stressful. Being bullied and getting beat up in grade school is real awful to me. Really, really awful. So. For me, uh, what I had a hard time in my life because of my disability, I think when I was in school, I think um, I remember one time that uh, I had a hard time because I was so tired. I have headaches. I wanted me to sleep. Uh, I didn't pay attention. And I said I, I had a hard time um, learning in subjects like you're in class, mm -hmm. uh, what is the homework, anything else. My grades were literally lower, went down. Because I get all C, 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 Cs. I'm going to say in ninth grade and 10th grade, something like that. And I remember one time, um, I have a cousin. Uh, she saw me. Uh, we're in a, like it's a class. We're doing like science. And she remembers, she tells me that she saw me. Uh, we're doing like a, a bucket to feel like if the bucket of water is hot or cold. And then, then I was touching the water bucket that it was hot. And I got burned, and one of the students were laughing at me. They told me, like, touch it, touch it here, touch it, uh, the water bucket. So I touched it. Then I got burned my hand, and they were laughing. And I remember, like, I would say, like, three years ago, when I was in my junior high school, in my outer high school, it was on a Saturday. I was getting mad at my dad because he's teaching me how to drive the car they was yelling me like, stop, stop, stop. Then looking forward, back and forward. Like you need to see around you if the auto car will pass you or they will like crash you. Then I was about to drive. Then he told me, stop, 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 stop. Then we were driving all the way there, like to find a place, like an address that my mom wants to look for. After I said that, um, tell you what, um, uh, I'm, I'm going to like park over there. Then after I park it, then I forgot to put parking. Then I throw the keys at my dad. And then I got back in the car. Then my dad drives. My dad was trying to explain, like, like judging me. Like, I don't, like, I don't know how to drive. You don't know how to drive. You don't, you know, you cannot do it right because you, I keep doing wrong, wrong, wrong. Then I was getting upset. And, and I was sad, too, because I cried. I really cried because... um. Since I'm, I'm doing all wrong, 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 like I always like trying to blame myself, like I'm doing it wrong. Can I do it right? Because I was feeling nervous and really, really nervous. And I was worried if I'm doing the right thing or about to hit somebody or crash another car. But you need to, you need to be careful, like how to, how to drive. So, because driving is not a toy. It's, it's not like, like you're in a video game, like you're driving fast. No, 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 no. You're driving a car in real life. You need to be responsible. Driving a car slower. You can drive fast, but a little bit, not too much. So it's not easy. Okay, so does anyone uh, wants to say something when we end this podcast episode? Well, let's just look at disabilities as something you're just diagnosed with. Like, and you're just limited to certain things, but like you're still like the normal average person. You could be able to do things like the normal average person would do. It's just that you're diagnosed with things and it's certain things you can't help. So you can still overcome those obstacles by getting some assistance from people that you trust. Like you can trust your doctor, you can trust your family and people that you trust in general that can help you out and give you best advice to help you out with your condition. Yeah, that's true. Okay, so thank you everyone for sharing your story. I think it's important to tell our real stories of what we've been through. Thank you for listening to Power Your Story. My name is Alvis. Have a nice day and see you later. Power Your Story podcast is produced by Chicago high school students with production support from After School Matters and Creative Imposter Studios. Our theme music is by our very own Gennaro Jackson, a.k.a. Professor DJ Sparks. Follow and subscribe, leave a comment, share our show with, with family and friends. Thank you for listening and peace out.